In today's passage, Jesus endures his temptation in the wilderness at the hands of the devil. And what I want to try to demonstrate in this video is that this passage can only truly be understood by seeing it as it relates to the Genesis account of Adam and Eve in the garden, which we find in Genesis chapter 3. And when you line these two separate stories up side by side, what we discover is that Jesus, our new spiritual head, is systematically succeeding where Adam, our former spiritual head, had failed. This is not a chapter simply about how to overcome temptation. This is a chapter demonstrating that Christ is victorious where Adam was not. And that everything that was lost when Adam succumbed to temptation is now being won back by Jesus. Perhaps the best place to begin is right in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were tempted by the devil. Adam and Eve were tempted by the devil to break God's design by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the one tree that God's law had forbidden them to eat of. And of course, that was the one thing that the devil would then tempt them with. In that story, the devil lied to Adam and Eve. He convinced them that God is some kind of cosmic killjoy who had lied to them. He said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, so it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some of it to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Three reasons are given for eating the fruit. It was good for food, it was a delight to the eyes, and she could gain wisdom. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, upon eating of the forbidden tree, all of humanity was thrown headfirst into the consequences of sin. Death reigned physically and spiritually. Adam was our spiritual head, or sometimes what theologians call our federal head, and he represented us in the Garden of Eden. And so when he failed, he did not only bring the curse of God's law on himself, but he brought it on his entire progeny. That's all of us. Adam, our first head, represented us before God. And through his failure, we've inherited death. But at the end of Genesis 3, a glimmer of hope is given. A promise of God that one day a child would be born who would defeat the devil where Adam had failed. Genesis 3.15 Now as the first act of Jesus' ministry, after being baptized and empowered by the Spirit for ministry, he's led into the wilderness where he's tempted by the devil. And the devil puts three temptations before Jesus. The lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. First, he attempts to get Jesus to break his fast and satisfy his need for food, the lust of the flesh. Then he was tempted to see all the kingdoms of the world in all of their beauty, the lust of the eyes. Finally, he was tempted to assert his own rule in his own time by publicly throwing himself from the temple and letting angels rescue him in front of the entire temple crowd, the pride of life. Though weakened in the flesh from 40 days of fasting, Jesus responded to all three temptations with, quote, it is written. Not once did he ever even contemplate straying from the path that God had given him. He was bound to God's word and proved victorious over every temptation. The New Testament calls Jesus the new Adam. So 1 Corinthians 15, 47 to 49, and then Romans 5, 12 to 21, we learn that Jesus is our new federal head. Here is how Romans 5, 18 to 19 puts it. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Every person ever born is either in Adam or in Christ. Someone is going to represent us. If we're in Christ through faith, then our victory has been secured by Jesus. He succeeded where Adam failed. Where Adam lost what could have been an eternal paradise through failure, Jesus has gained an eternal paradise through his victory.